Let's understand how the clustering algorithm works. We'll start with the k-means clustering algorithm. This is the most uh, widely used of all the clustering algorithms. The k in the k-means clustering algorithm refers to the fact that the algorithm is going to look for k different clusters, which means when applied on a data set, the algorithm is going to break the data set into k different clusters. In case it's unable to find k clusters, it's going to break the data into k minus one clusters. So if we specify k is equal to 5, then the clustering algorithm is going to break the population into 5 clusters. The value of k has to be specified to the algorithm before it starts. So we have to decide how many clusters we want before we start the clustering process. Let's take an example to see how this algorithm works. We have a population that we've mapped on two different variables. So we are assuming that we've got a set of observations and two different variables for those observations. We've uh, plotted the observations along these two variables on the graph here. This is our entire population. This is a two dimensional example that we are taking for the sake of understanding. The purpose here is to understand how the algorithm works and uh, the same logic is then applied across n dimensions. So let's assume that we want three different clusters. So the first step is for the algorithm to identify three seeds. How the algorithm does it? It will take three random observations from the data set and assign them as seeds. So now we've assigned three of these observations as seeds. You can see these observations as marked in black. The next step is to assign all the other observations to one of these three seeds based on their proximity to the seeds. So how do we do this? How do we decide which of the observations is closer to which seed? For example, the observation here in the center, how do we decide whether it's, it's closer to the seed on the left or on the right? Okay, so we'll use our high school geometry for this. We'll draw a straight line between the two seats and we'll draw a perpendicular bisector to this line. Now all the points on the left of the line are closer to the left seat and all the points that lie on the right of this perpendicular bisector are closer to the right seat. So we'll essentially draw three lines between the three seats and we'll draw perpendicular bisectors of those three lines which will help us decide which seat is closer to which line. Let's now understand how the algorithm assigns all the different observations to one of the seeds. So uh, the first step is to basically draw a straight line between the two seeds. If we draw a straight line and then we draw a perpendicular bisector. What that means is we find the midpoint of this line which is say somewhere here and we draw a perpendicular bisector from the midpoint. Okay. So now, uh, according to simple high school geometry, any point to the left of this line is closer to seed 1 here and any point to the right of this line is closer to seed 2. Okay. Similarly, if we draw a straight line between seed 1 and seed 3 and then we draw a perpendicular bisector of this line, now any point below the line is going to be closer to seed 1 and any point above the line is going to be closer to seed 3. Okay, So a combination of the, the two perpendicular bisectors, what we've marked here in black, any point in this area is going to be closer to seed 1. Okay. Similarly, we can create the area for seed 3 and the remaining area for seed 2. So this is how the algorithm will assign any observation to one of the three seeds. Depending on where it falls, under uh, which seeds area the observation falls in, it will be assigned to that seed. So here what we've uh, done is we've assigned all the records into three different groups. We've assigned them to one of the three seeds. Okay. So this is essentially the first set of clusters that we formed. We've created three clusters now based on the three random seeds that were chosen. Now the question here is how do we know if these are the most optimal clusters? 
these have been chosen based on the seeds and we can clearly see from how the algorithm works that if the seeds were chosen differently we could get different results so how do we decide this is the most optimal cluster so this is not the end of the process this is just the first iteration now what the algorithm will do it will calculate the centroid of each of the three clusters so it's going to identify the midpoint of the three clusters and it's going to assign that as the seed for the next round. 